The GoPro Hero 11 Black is a fantastic little action camera, but after using it since release, I have found eight tips and tricks to make it even better. These tips will make it better to use for vlogging, easier to change settings underwater, get better looking videos and more. Let's jump right in. Now, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Matthew and I create videos helping you get the most from your camera gear like this GoPro, but also drones, gimbals and more. So if you would like to see more of that, please consider subscribing and making sure that notification bell is on so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. It would be greatly appreciated. All right, let's take a look at tip number one, and that is the lens tool. Now the lens tool is a super useful feature that allows you to change your video's field of view or change the GoPro lens that you used even after you have recorded that video. And this works for the GoPro Hero 11 Black and the GoPro Hero 11 Mini. So what you want to do is you want to load up the GoPro Quick App. I've got it on my iPhone, but you can load it up on your iPad or Android device. You want to tap the GoPro button on the bottom right of the app, and then you want to go to View Media. Now we need to transfer them files off the GoPro and onto the phone and app first, before we can use this lens tool. So once you see the preview of all your clips, I'm going to select all of them by selecting this multi-select tool in the top right of the screen, select all the clips, and then press the download button on the bottom of the app and wait for these to download to the phone. Now, once all the clips have downloaded, you want to close that screen and you want to go back and then press the media button on the bottom of the app. And then you want to go into the clip that you want to change the lens or change the field of view for. So this first clip I recorded in Hyperview, which is the widest field of view available. But let's say I wanted to narrow that field of view for this clip. Well, to do that, you simply want to press the pencil button or the edit button on the bottom left of the app. And then you will see the lens tool icon. And you want to press that to open up the lens tool. And now in here, you will see the options to change your lenses or change your field of view. So as mentioned, this was recorded in Hyperview, but I can change this to Superview to make it slightly narrower. I can go to Wide to narrow it again, or I can go to Linear. Now the nice thing is if you record it in Hyperview, whenever you get down to the Wide or Linear field of views, you'll also get the option to reframe your clips. So as you can see, I can actually move this box up or down to reframe my video in this narrower field of view. And then once you're happy with your changes, simply press the tick on the bottom right of the app. Now, something you can also do with this lens tool is rotate your clip if you're reducing your field of view down. So if I play this clip, you can see that the horizon is slightly off. It's not perfectly level. So what I'm gonna do is press that lens tool and I'm gonna change this down to a wide field of view and then you can see along the bottom a dial where I can rotate this clip left or right. So I can actually rotate this clip to the right to make that horizon level. And then when I press that tick on the bottom right of the app to confirm my changes, you can now see that this clip is level. Now, another thing you can do with this lens tool is turn on horizon lock even after you've recorded the clip without it. So if I go into this clip and hit play, you can see I rotated the GoPro, but let's say after watching this clip back, you want the horizon to remain level. Well, you can do that by pressing that edit button, going to the lens tool, and then selecting the horizon lock option. And now when this clip plays back, you can see the horizon stays level at all times. Now, the only downside of the lens tool is that you can only narrow the field of view down retroactively. You can't increase the field of view. So in this clip, I recorded it with the wide lens or the wide field of view. And if I go to the edit option and go to the lens tool, you can see I can only go down to linear. The super view and hyper view are locked. Lock exposure. Now the GoPro is really good at setting the exposure automatically and has good dynamic range. However, if you're coming into and out of dark areas a lot, so let's say you're going into a dark forest and then coming out into the daylight, and then going into a dark forest again, or into and out of buildings, what you might find is them exposure shifts can become quite jarring. The image can get really bright, then really dark, and then really bright again. So to avoid that, you can do something called logging the exposure. Now to do that, you want to tap and hold on the screen until you see a spot meter option become available. And then you can drag this spot metering square around to hover over the area of the image you want to expose for. 
So you can put that spot metering box over the ground to expose for the ground, or you could put it over the sky to expose slightly darker for the sky to make sure you get all them clouds in. Now you can also change the exposure compensation by pressing this exposure compensation button here. And what this will do is it will tell the GoPro to expose slightly brighter or slightly darker for the area you have selected. So if you drag this circle down, the more negative the number, the darker the image, and the more positive the number, the brighter the image. I'm just gonna leave this set to zero. Now, once you're happy, all you need to do is tap and hold on the square until you see locked exposure come up on the screen and that padlock symbol appear and then press the icon on the bottom right of the screen and now your exposure will be locked and you won't get them exposure shifts as you come into and out of dark areas. Now to turn off exposure lock, all you simply need to do is tap that exposure lock square and now the GoPro will start setting that exposure automatically again. Changing settings underwater. Now, if you're using your GoPro underwater, you won't actually be able to use the screen on the back of the GoPro. So how can you change your settings? Or maybe you have the GoPro mounted in such a way that you simply just don't have access to the back of it to change them settings. Well, you can change your modes using the buttons of the GoPro so that you don't need to use the screen. So let's say you want to change from the normal video mode to slow motion mode. To do that, all you need to do is press the record button on the top of the GoPro and the mode button on the side at the same time. And then you will see a menu appear on the front screen of the GoPro. And you can see your video modes if you're in video mode or your photo or time-lapse modes if you're in them modes. Now to scroll down through these options, all you need to do is press the mode button. So I can go from standard to full frame to activity to cinematic, down to ultra slow motion. And then once you're hovering over the mode you want to go into, all you have to do is press that record button on the top of the GoPro and your GoPro will go into that mode. Limiting the ISO. Now in the GoPro settings, you can set a ISO minimum and an ISO maximum. Now the ISO setting of a GoPro changes how sensitive the camera sensor is to light. And as the ISO increases, you will get a brighter image. And this is used when you're going into dark areas to brighten up that image so you can see the video more clearly. However, the downside to using higher and higher ISOs is the more you increase the ISO, the more green, noise, and artifacts will be added to the video. As you can see in this example, the ISO minimum of 100 looks clean, sharp, and has no noise. But by the time you start getting up to these higher ISOs, you can start to see that grain really impact the quality of the video. So you want to limit this so that your GoPro never goes into them higher ISO settings so that you get usable video out of your GoPro at all times. Now to do that, you want to go into your video mode preset by tapping on the bottom middle of the screen pressing the pencil icon next to the video mode preset you're using. Scroll down to the Pro Tune options. And where you see ISO Min and ISO Max, you want to make sure you have your ISO Min set to 100. And then you want to go into the ISO Max. This is the important one. And I recommend you change this down to 800 so that the GoPro can never automatically increase the ISO above 800. I find anything above 800 is when you start to really see and notice that grain being introduced to the video. So I recommend you set this to ISO Max 800 and then you will get clean and sharp video from your GoPro at all times. Now, if you don't see the presets button on the bottom middle of the screen to be able to go in and change them settings, it's probably because your GoPro is still in easy mode. So to change into pro mode, you want to swipe down from the top of the screen, then swipe from right to left. And under the controls option, you want to tap that and go in and slide the white circle on the right side of the screen up so that you change into pro mode. And then when you go back to the home screen, you will see that presets option appear so that you can go in and change them settings. Record once for all platforms. Now, if you're somebody who likes to record footage and upload it to multiple different platforms, such as YouTube and Instagram, this next tip is gonna make your life so much easier. Instead of having to record multiple pieces of footage in different aspect ratios, such as recording a video once in 16 by nine horizontal for YouTube, and then re-recording the same video, but this time in a nine by 16 vertical for Instagram, you can select a new eight by seven aspect ratio on the GoPro. 
Now this is gonna give you a high resolution square video file from which you can crop out multiple different aspect ratios. And the best part is you only need to record that video once to get them multiple different aspect ratios, saving you so much time. And meaning if it's something you can only record once, such as a event, then you can still get them different aspect ratios for all them different platforms. So let's look first at how you set it. You want to go in to the video preset you are using, again by tapping that button on the bottom middle of the screen, selecting the pencil icon next to the video preset you are using, and then under Res and FPS, you want to select the 8x7 option on the top right of the screen, and then you will be recording in this 8x7 high resolution mode. Now, once you have captured that video file, you can crop out them aspect ratios using your video editor of choice. But in this example, I'm gonna do it using the GoPro Quick App. So once we have transferred them video files from that GoPro to your GoPro Quick App, again, you want to go to the media tab on the bottom of the app, and then you want to select a video file that you want to crop different aspect ratios out of that you recorded in eight by seven. So here is an eight by seven video file that I recorded. And let's say I want to get a 16 by nine and a nine by 16 from this. So you want to press that pencil edit button on the bottom left of the screen. Then you want to press the frame icon on the bottom of the screen and select fit. And now you can see them different aspect ratios along the bottom of the screen. So I can select 16 by nine. I can drag this box up or down to make sure my subject is perfectly centered in the frame. And then I can select the tick option on the bottom right of the screen and then go up to save to save this video out in that horizontal aspect ratio. And now if I want a vertical aspect ratio for Instagram, I can again press that edit icon on the bottom left of the screen, go to frame again, go to fit, and this time go across to nine by 16. And now you can see I've got a nine by 16 video. Again, I can drag this box left or right to make sure my subject is perfectly centered. And now that I'm happy with this, I can export it by pressing that tick on the bottom right and again pressing save. Set up the front screen for vlogging. Now out of the box after a few minutes, the GoPro will automatically turn off the front screen. But if you want to use the GoPro for vlogging, you always want that front screen to be on so that you can see yourself to frame your videos. So let's change that setting so the front screen never turns off. So to do that, you want to swipe down on the top of the screen and then swipe from right to left until you see the preferences button appear. You want to press that preferences button and then you want to scroll down until you see the displays option and tap into it. Then you will see two options, screen saver rear and screen saver front, where you can set how long that screen will stay on for before it turns off. Now by default, the front screen will match the rear screen setting, but we want to tap that screen saver front option and scroll up to the never option. And now if you tap back to the home screen, that front screen will never turn off, making the GoPro much better for vlogging because you can always see yourself to see what you're capturing quick access to settings. Now this is a super simple tip, but it will make your life so much easier when navigating to change the settings of your modes. So by default, if you want to change the settings, such as the Pro Chain settings for the mode you're in, you have to tap the presets button on the bottom middle of the home screen, and then tap the pencil icon next to the mode that you want to adjust the settings for. But there's a quicker and easier way to get into that settings menu. So if I go back to the home screen and I press and hold on that presets button on the bottom middle of the screen, you can see we go directly into the settings for that preset so that we can make adjustments much quicker. Customize shortcuts. Now on the home screen, you will see four circular buttons and these are your shortcuts. Now these shortcuts allow you to go in to change settings much quicker without having to go into your presets settings. So you can see if I tap the hyper smooth shortcut, on the right side of the screen, I can go in and change the hyper smooth setting. Or if I want to change my field of view quickly, I can tap the field of view or GoPro lens shortcut on the bottom left of the screen. But you can actually change each one of these shortcuts so that you can get quick access to different settings. So let's say you never use the zoom option in the GoPro. Well, you can actually change the zoom shortcut in the bottom right of the screen or any shortcut, but I'm gonna use the zoom one for example, by pressing and holding on that shortcut. And then you will see a new menu appear where you can change what that shortcut button will take you to. So you can set it to a slow-mo shortcut, a scheduled capture shortcut. 
You can change it so you can change your hindsight settings, set a timer, change your bitrate, shutter, white balance, sharpness, color settings, wind reduction, and more. So let's say I want to change this to a shortcut for my color settings. So I'm gonna select color. And then if I tap back to the home screen, you can see the shortcut when I press it will now take me to my color settings where I can change from vibrant to natural to flat. So that's eight settings to make the GoPro Hero 11 Black even better. Now, before you go, if you liked this video and you learned something new, please let me know by giving me the thumbs up and clicking that like button down below. And if you would like to see more videos on how to get the most from your camera gear, such as your GoPro, but also drones, gimbals, and more, then why not subscribe to my channel and make sure that notification bell is on so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. If you would like to learn even more about the GoPro Hero 11 Black, then why not check out this in-depth beginner's guide that will teach you absolutely everything you need to know about this action camera. I'll not keep you back any further. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you over there.